Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. In 1967, we got to experience a British comedy film that was directed and produced by Stanley Donnan. That film was Bedazzled. The production was written by comedian Peter Cook, and it starred both Cook and his comedy partner, Dudley Moore. You'll also see some great supporting roles by Eleanor Braun and Raquel Welch, as well as many others. The film basically is a comic retelling of the Faust legend, and it's set in swinging London of the 1960s. The story follows Stanley Moon, a devout 28-year-old man who lacks confidence and works as a short-order cook at Wimpy Diner in London. Despite having a deep love for Margaret Spencer, who's a waitress at the diner, Stanley struggles to find the courage to actually speak to her. His prayers to God for help in this matter are seemingly answered when the devil, who goes by the name of George Spigot on earth, offers him seven wishes in exchange for his soul. Stanley, feeling disconnected from his soul and desperate for love, he agrees to the deal. And then he has to navigate through the consequences of all his wishes. As the story unfolds, Stanley's relationship with George becomes a complex mix of love and hate, leading him to a deeper understanding of life in general. But the big question remains that whether both Stanley and George will get what they want out of this deal. Initially, to prove that he's the devil, Stanley asks him for a trial wish, and he wishes for a raspberry ice lollipop. He's eventually convinced that George is truly the devil. He's told by George that any time he runs into trouble and he wants to change his mind, all he has to do is blow a raspberry, and it will stop. George has a staff on earth of seven deadly sins, especially lust and envy, and they are helping with minor acts of vandalism and spite to reach George's goal of claiming one billion souls. This will allow him to be readmitted to heaven. Stanley first wishes to be more articulate, and George then turns him into a talkative intellectual. This doesn't work out at all and ends with Margaret screaming rape. Stanley then wishes to be a multimillionaire with Margaret as his physical wife. But all the time that they are together, she ignores him, being physically attracted to other men. Then he thinks that being a pop singer would be the answer, but that doesn't work out either. He then makes the comment to George that he wishes that he could just be a fly on the wall. George then turns both of them into literal flies on the wall in a morgue. After that wish doesn't work out, he then wishes that he and Margaret lived a quiet life in the countryside with children. And though deeply in love, Stanley and Margaret's attempt to consummate their affection drives both of them into emotional agony. Stanley is determined to frame a wish that George just can't ruin. He wishes that he and Margaret loved one another, lived away from the city with no other men around, and would always be together. He then turns him into a nun on the order of St. Beryl. Once again, his wishes don't work out, and Stanley's attempt to escape this wish by blowing a raspberry has no effect. So he returns to London himself to confront George. He does, and Stanley tries to use his seventh wish. But George reveals to him at this point that it had already been used, and that was his trial wish for an ice lollipop. 
While the production was being made, they really didn't have a title going on for it. Peter Cook, being the comedian that he is, suggested calling the film Raquel Welch. The producers just couldn't understand why Cook would want to name the movie after an actress who appears for only a few minutes during the film. He went on to explain that the way the movie marquees are set up, it puts the lead actor's names over the film title. Thus, the letters on the marquee would say Peter Cook and Dudley Moore in Raquel Welch. Needless to say, the producers didn't find this amusing at all and went with a more ordinary title. Dudley Moore adopted the moniker Stanley Moon in the film after John Gilgood wrote him a letter of introduction because he was impressed with Moore's work in the stage review Beyond the Fringe. Gilgood referred to Moore as Stanley Moon in this letter. Being amused by this, Moore adopted the name as his alter ego for the rest of his life. After they worked together on Arthur from 1981 and Arthur II from 1988, Gilgood good-naturedly said that he got to know Stanley Moon rather well during these films. Now, one of the slight bits of trivia that you'll see throughout the project is that the character of the demon, George Spigot, is always wearing red socks, even when you see him as a character of being a fly. At one point, you'll hear him mention how things come in sevens. And in this list of sevens, he mentions Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, a movie from 1954. That film was also directed by this film's director, Stanley Donnan. Now, despite having only seven minutes of screen time, Raquel Welch became so associated with this film that when it was remade in the year 2000, The Devil was based more on her than Peter Cook. And her character in the movie of Lillian Lust is the best in the film. She has some of the most well-written lines in it leaving Stanley Moon speechless most of the time. She ends up removing quite a bit of her clothes and telling him that she needs to have her pores breathe and asking him if he can hear her pores breathe. She grabs his head and slams it against her breast. She says then, would you like a nibble? Or would you like some hot toast or some buttered buns? doing everything she can to arouse his senses in a very sensual way. And one of the ways that they decided to make this character more sensuous was to allow Raquel to do this scene with a complete southern drawl, which is way over the top, and done strictly to make her character seem more lusty. Go back and watch this film. I think it's a good one. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.